Hey everybody, it's good to see you again. I believe last time that we saw each other, uh, that was the video on snakes that we did. And I had some mixed reviews about that. Some people liked it, a lot of people didn't necessarily like it. So don't worry, today we are gonna bridge a different topic. I don't have any snakes with me except for this one right here. Oh, don't worry, it's just a stick. Just a stick, don't worry. All right, now where were we at? Oh yeah, the new topic that we're gonna talk about today it's a topic that is very relevant and special to northern middle Tennessee as well as up in Kentucky in this, this um, the Highland Rim region that we live in. And what that is, is karst topography. Now, some of you might be saying, what is karst topography? Karst, uh, spelt K-A-R-S-T, and what that means is it's a type of topography that has to do with the dissolution of soluble rocks. And what does that mean exactly? Well, the feature of karst topography is sinkholes and caves. Something is very, it's very, very relevant to where we live. It seems like on the news we're always hearing about new sinkholes opening up, under the interstates and cities, swallowing cars, that type of thing. And it's, it's this part of uh, Tennessee and the country where we live, it so happens to be that there's only one other region in the entire world that has more karst topography than we have here. And that's, it's a, uh, Slovenia in Europe has more than we have here, but, which that means we have a lot. Now, let me talk about caves and sinkholes. Um, the definition, the dissolution of soluble rocks. What that means is this part of Tennessee, our predominant bedrock here is what's called limestone. Now limestone is a, it was left behind uh, millions of years ago by oceans that used to be here and it's made up of seashells really, fossils, fossilized seashells. If you're walking out in the field or the woods sometimes, a lot of times you could find a rock with those fossils in them of uh, small seashells. So that's what we have deposited under our soil here in Tennessee. And it is soluble, meaning that it does, um, it corrodes with water. Uh, here in Tennessee, uh, this part of Tennessee, I think we average around 50 inches of water per year. And when you have cavities through the ground, kind of like this, this Swiss cheese design, water seeps through the ground and over thousands, millions of years, it slowly dissolves that rock causing these, these channels and it degrades that bedrock. So visualize this in your mind. You have this, this bedrock, this supporting column right here. You have your soil on top of it. So over time, when that bedrock, that limestone slowly degrades, there's nothing underneath it to support your top layer of ground. Thus, the top layer caves in, causing a sinkhole and or a cave. And a lot of times they can form overnight. If we have a heavy, heavy rain event, you could have new sinkholes open up. Um, and with sinkholes, it can be a potential hazard, especially with agriculture. If you have a, and some of these sinkholes are big enough to swallow a vehicle easily. If you have one on your property and you have livestock, it's it's always a good idea to to put a perimeter fence around it so they can't wander off into it. And something I also think about is if you have a cave or sinkhole on your property and you're doing uh, some type of mowing or bush hogging, that type of thing, you can potentially be driving over the top of one. And it can be potentially dangerous. One can open up with you or you can fall into one that opened up recently and you didn't know it was there. So it, it might seem kind of silly, but it's not a bad idea that if your tractor or, or implement, truck, whatever, has, has a seat belt, it's not a bad idea to, to buckle it driving across the field because it can be potentially hazardous. And actually, let me give you a visual representation of what I'm talking about as far as sinkholes and caves go. Let's see here. Now this is exactly what I'm talking about. Let's see if you get a good shot of that. That is a, you know, I don't really know. I guess it's a, it's, it's definitely a, a cave and it's probably definitely a sinkhole. It's a little bit of both, it's a sink cave. Um, but that is exactly what I'm talking about. I don't know how well you can tell with the camera, but 
that could easily swallow a vehicle right there. It's, I don't know if the camera does it justice or not, but it is a, it's a big hole. It's a very, very large hole. And that took millions, thousands of years for, for the, the limestone itself to be corroded from water seeping through there. And over time, it just keeps getting larger and larger and larger. And uh, yes, that is a, a good visual of what I'm talking about. And it's this area of Tennessee, as well as when you go up in Kentucky, kind of like what we talked about a few seconds ago. Let me set you back down here. Up in the western Kentucky, there is a cave. It's called Mammoth Cave National Park. Um, if you get on Interstate 65, go a little ways north of Bowling Green, it is the longest cave in the world. I believe surveyors have mapped a little over 400 miles of it. Just incredible. And they say they're still finding new passageways all the time. So just right here in our backyard, we have the longest cave in the world. And that is why, you know, this area, it's just like I said, behind um, Slovenia and Europe, we have a very, very high area of caves and sinkholes here. And if you are interested in them, if your kids are interested, it's just right up the interstate. It's very, very educational, talking about how caves are formed, uh, the history of it. It's really, really amazing. So after, if like this spring and the summer, if we have large rain events, if you live on property where you've seen sinkholes open up before, always be aware and on guard that they can open up anywhere. And uh, just keep your eyes open for them. Everybody, we hope y'all are having a great week. We hope you're getting outside and enjoying these beautiful May temperatures we're having. We hope your, your gardens are growing. You got all those planted. And if you don't have anything as far as your garden, garden seed, uh, lime, fertilizer, we have it at the store. Just come see us anytime. We hope y'all have a blessed week. Thank you.